Hi everybody, my name is Kieran Storr. I am a third year biology student at the University of Oxford. Um, last year, I completed a week long micro internship with the TVRC looking at Alauda arvensis, commonly known as Skylark and how the uh, species has changed uh, in Oxfordshire and Berkshire over the last 50 so years. So some background about Skylarks, they were um, red listed in the UK in 1996. Uh, they're an iconic farmland species and iconic to the English countryside. They are ground nesting species. They nest in 20 to 50 centimeters of vegetation and they nest two to three times each summer. They forage for seeds and insects, traditionally in large flocks, but since their population has crashed, uh, this is seen less often, which we'll get to a bit later. And they live year round in Oxfordshire and Berkshire, but they do migrate in um, northern parts of England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. So the threats to skylarks are reduced nesting opportunities. Um, autumn sown cereal crops uh, grow too high by the time summer comes around for skylarks to nest. So they end up nesting in trail lines, which are where tractors drive and they get crushed. Um, there's also higher grazing densities, which have caused reduced grass height in those areas, which is too short for skylarks. And there's also been a switch from hay to silage, which requires more frequent cuts, which again, results in destroyed nests and um, vegetation that's too short for them to nest in the interim time. They also have reduced winter food supply due to autumn sown cereal crops and winter cover crops. Traditionally, they would forage um, in the stubbles of fields for leftover seed. Um, but now because there's this coverage, um, they do not have that sort of food availability in the winter time. And so some resolutions to this that have been proposed are agri-environment schemes and traditional farming practices. So pictured here are, is one of these agri-environment schemes. Um, it was tested by the RS, RSPB in Cambridgeshire. Um, and so you leave these big patches within um, fields where skylarks come and nest and colonize and you, you leave them be basically. Um, and it's been shown to help skylarks though they're not very specific in their um, report how much uh, better this is for skylarks and how this improved their numbers, but it is something to keep in mind as we discuss um, how skylark populations have changed locally. So questions to answer are one, what are the local population trends and are they similar to national trends in our, and are they improving in our locality? Two, where are skylarks being sighted and what sites are the most active and are these protected areas? And three, what group sizes are being seen most frequently and how has that changed over time and where are these being seen? So the skylark uh, citing trends in Oxfordshire and Berkshire. So I graphed the abundance per year of um, skylarks um, and that's shown here. And so at first glance, this looks like we have um, more skylarks that are in Oxfordshire and Berkshire. But when I corrected this for the citing effort that was made each year, it actually so shows a decline. So as people have become more interested in seeing skylarks, we're seeing more of them, but there's not actually more of them for every um, citing attempt that people have made. And this is very similar to um, England's um, pop Skylark population trends over this roughly the same time frame. So where are Skylarks being sighted? So on the left hand side here um, in green, we have the protected areas of Oxfordshire and Berkshire and in purple we have areas that Skylarks have been sighted. And so on the right side, I highlighted this with a reddish orange color. Um, and so that's where skylarks have been seen and where that overlaps with the protected areas. So this animation shows um, how sites have been active by decade. If you um, draw your attention to the yellow patches, you can see starting in 1980, very few patches were occupied. And as time has gone on, more of these patches have become occupied, which is, which is very good. Um, it's encouraging to know that the distribution of skylarks is improving in our area. So then I um, looked at this pie chart to kind of identify which of these sites is it getting the most of these, um, which is getting the most skylarks. Um, and the sites with the most sightings are on the left hand side here. These are all um, protected or partially protected areas, uh, most of them by the Barks, Bucks, and Oxon Wildlife Trusts. Um, so that's a really good indication that protected areas are where skylarks are being seen in the most, uh, the most frequently. So what group sizes are being seen most frequently is another question that I wanted to answer. Uh, I categorized abundance as being low, one to 10 individuals, medium 10 to 50, and high being 50 plus. Um, these are records since 2010. And again, um, sites that had these different group sizes were highlighted in yellow. So 
as you can see, as group size goes up, you see less sites in yellow. So very few sites have large group sizes. And again, here is a pie chart, which is looking at which specific sites are having the most of these larger groups. Um, Englefield has over a third. So Englefield's a really important site for these larger groups, um, as is Upper Hayford Airfield and Bury Down. And importantly, I wanted to point out Wells Farm, which is the um, only site um, that overlaps with these high group sizes um, and just general um, Skylark sightings. So Wells Farm appears to be a really important space. And I also, when I was researching this, found the upper, upper Hayford Airfield um, is actually in the process of being developed or is planned to be developed. So in November, 2020, this article was released on Oxford Daily Mail, um, which is talking about how the um, airfield is going to be developed, which is really unfortunate because this is an important site for Skylark. So clearly there's a lot of work that needs to be done to um, better protect the species because we have this ongoing um, development, which is going to hurt the population. So the takeaways are that the local trends are mirroring the national trends. And in the past 20 years, more sites have become active, which is great. Um, so what we need to focus on in the future is making sure that these sites can, can support larger groups of Skylarks. Uh, again, most patches last 10 years have been, been used by smaller groups of Skylarks and protected areas are where the bulk of sightings are occurring. Um, this might be due to public access and accessibility. Um, and better habitat quality. So people know that they're likely to see skylarks, they go out specifically to see them in these protected areas. Um, and so you get more records in those areas um, on top of the benefits of being protected. So further action would be to identify the location of the agro-environment schemes um, and where they're overlapping with these skylark populations and to try to assess their success and maybe incentivize them more because if that's why we're seeing this increased distribution, then we should be encouraging um, that action. And it would be also interesting to see what makes some sites more successful, what makes sites amenable to these large groups of Skylarks, and how can we make other areas better for that as well. And an, another good question would be, how can we prioritize protecting more areas with traditional agricultural practices? A lot of the time, when we decide to um, protect areas, we end up wanting to just leave them naturally as they are, but it might be um, it's, it's actually really important to have some of these sites with their traditional practices because Skylarks thrive in that sort of environment. So I want to thank uh, the TVRC for this opportunity experience. I had a wonderful time um, going through this data and putting this together. Um, this QR code here will take you to a more um, complete version of my write-up. And uh, I also have here my email and my LinkedIn. That QR code will bring you to my LinkedIn. Um, feel free to email me with any questions. I will also be there for live Q&A. And if you have any sort of conservation work or things that you would like somebody to get involved with, I am more than happy to. Um, I'm very passionate about this and it's very important to me. So thank you. And I will be answering questions in the near future.